Ladies, gentlemen, Bat family out there, welcome back to a brand new The Batman Discussion Series episode. And if you're brand new here, just right off the bat, what we do, it is kind of in the name. We talk about the Batman ideas, theories, I get involved with you guys, you send your comments, ideas, and theories in. We talk about the second movie that's coming our way, and the spin-offs. And that is most certainly something we will be getting into today, given the somewhat recent news surrounding the Arkham series and I know all of you should be uh, very aware of what I'm on about there and a lot of you have been talking about that but when this video is uploading it's probably I mean to be honest I don't know what day it's uploading but this is one of my over the Christmas period uploads I, I thought it was kind of perfect because I believe it was Christmas Eve last year when we did a Batman discussion series episode and here we are around about a year later when you're watching this and you know it is is it Christmas Eve again I don't know but if it is or if it's slightly afterwards Merry Christmas, guys. I hope you've had uh, or are going to have a great Christmas. I should really maybe plan things out a little bit better. But here's to once again another year for the Batman discussion series, guys. Seriously, for some of you who may be new to the channel, you might be like, what do you mean another year? This has been going on since before the Batman movie even started filming. That is how long. Because in the next year, ladies and gentlemen, we are going to get some significant updates for the Batman Part 2. Can you imagine the material that we're going to have to discuss in this discussion series? It's going to be crazy. But for today's episode, as I said, it's been six weeks since the previous one. And since the previous episode, we've had quite a big update within Matt Reeves' Batverse. And that is the Arkham series. And a lot of you have sent some questions in. So let's get straight into that. But before we do, I'd really appreciate a like on this video. You guys always go ham. I think the last video took off very, very well again. So let's see if we can get it to a similar amount of likes. But right at the beginning here, actually, a shout out to one of the Bat fans family members on the channel and I've seen many comments like this. Love these videos as always. Been watching for a long time now. Long before the Batman came out. Well, shout out to you AJ Trax and anyone else who is along for this discussion series ride. So comment number one here. This one is one that I'm seeing quite a bit and most certainly something I've been wondering about myself. I mean, after all, the quote was way back when with Variety when asked about seeing Barry Keoghan's Joker again, he says there might be places. There's stuff I'm very interested in doing in an Arkham space, potentially for HBO Max. I mean, so this tells you how old this quote is and this is really really just a, a, a good comparison for just how things have changed since the concept stage to that of the DCU pitch. And by the way, if you haven't actually seen my breakdown video of the timeline for how the Arkham series went from like a Reeves verse, Bat verse project in the very early concept stage to that of a DCU pitch for James Gunn's brand new DC universe, do check that video out. There are things we've talked about there, so it's very possible. It also isn't impossible that there is some story that comes back where Joe comes into our world. So yeah, I mean, you can't blame us for thinking that Barry Keown's Joker was maybe going to have a role in that Arkham series. Here we have Joseph Freaker 3639 saying, with this news now, does this mean that the Joker will play a bigger role in the Batverse movies than we thought? I say this because up until now, you have stated that you thought that the Joker would have a role in the Arkham show, but with it in the DCU, and with Reeves saying that the Joker will continue in some way in the Reevesverse, as well as the recent Barry interview where he basically confirmed the Joker will be back, does this mean a larger role in the movies than we thought? And that is something, yes, I do need to reiterate once again, even though I covered it recently, you are basically correct, and I've, I'm saying the same thing. Normally, I don't like people or myself, and I never normally do phrase things this way with, oh, it's basically confirmed. I'm normally quite a sucker for like, yeah, no, it needs to be confirmed, confirmed. But in situations like this, it is very cut and dry obvious. And that is what Barry Keoghan said in the recent interview. So on a potential return of the Joker in the Batman part two, Barry Keoghan responded, I can't really say anything about that, my man. It would be exciting, wouldn't it? To see the Joker come to life again. My smile says it all. You know what I mean? So he's very, very fully aware. And I encourage you to watch the video for yourself. I would put it in this video, but uh, trust me, copyright on YouTube can be uh, quite a sucker. Um, but he is very fidgety. The body language is pointing in all the right directions. And as he said at the end, you know, my smile says it all. You know what I mean? He is 
almost grinning like the joke from ear to ear. So yeah, I say kind of as well, basically Loki confirmed. So to answer your question after this long ramble already, I do think that this will likely mean that if Matt Reeves, no matter what, at the very early concept stage, at the foundations of this Arkham show, no, mo no matter what anyone tells you, we've heard it from the horse's mouth himself, it was Batverse related at its foundation. Now, I'm not going to pretend to know, because I don't know, what he was exactly going to do with the Arkham show. But he has said also himself, and has teased, that it's not impossible that there could be some stories coming back, you know, joke related in the Arkham space. So with that being said, I think it's a reasonable speculation to say that he would have featured in that show to some capacity. Again, with my ideas, would it have been a breakout? Would that have facilitated his return to Gotham for that comeback story with maybe even Paul Dano's Riddler? Let's just say, hypothetically, it was going somewhere down that line and he could have had a larger role in part three. Or if you really want to argue that they could have squeezed the show out before part two, maybe even part two, who, who knows? But now that we won't have the Arkham series in the Batverse, this would have to mean if Matt Reeves, quite simply, wants to use the Joker in his future movies for part two or part three, he's going to have to be in more scenes in part two or part three. It's, it's just as simple as that, because if he was going to originally expand that role out in the Arkham show, and you're, you're quite simply not going to get that. And, you know, you could say, but what if there's another show that the Batverse might get in where they can feature Barry Keown's Joker. Like, what other show could there be other than Arkham? If Barry Keown's Joker is currently locked away in Arkham, I don't know what other possible show they could give to the Batverse that would get a green light that, that wouldn't basically be called Arkham. So you, you are going to see Barry Keown again. I think that's inevitable in part two and part three, possibly. But I'm very confident about part two because even with the Arkham series being a Batverse thing and us believing that up until very recently, I still thought we would get another little teaser in part two, even if it's just akin to the scenes that we had in the Batman part one. Well, really, we only had one scene at the end, but that was very, very quick when Riddler was locked away in Arkham, but then we had that deleted scene. I still expected something. So, for example, if we had the Arkham series releasing between part two and part three, which is what I've been thinking up until most recently, I thought whatever we see of Barry Keown's Joker in part two would kind of be a backdoor pilot for that. Just kind of like, hey, we're still at Arkham. Hey, you remember that scene in part one where we teased the comeback story? Well, we know that Batman's had this whole other plot with, let's just say, Mr. Freeze in this film, but we're still here and we're still <laughs> cooking up our comeback story. Hey, we've got an Arkham show coming out between this movie and now the third movie. Go check us out afterwards. That kind of vibe. I thought we'd just be revisiting them. Maybe the plan could have been a little bit further along. They're not necessarily breaking out there and then because obviously you had the Arkham series or so we thought, uh, but we were just going to get an update. But now, no Arkham series. So I know I keep kind of going around in circles here, but I think it comes down to if Matt Reeves wants to use the Joker and he has hinted to us that he may very well want to use the Joker again and even refer to the Arkham space when revisiting that story. And now with Barry Kilwin's most recent tease with regards to specifically the Batman part two, I think he must have a little bit of a bigger role. Now, I still don't want to say that he'll be like a main, 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 main villain. I can't guarantee that because I know after talking about it in this video, there's going to be some people and fair enough, it's it's not for everyone, right? Everyone has different preferences. Some people don't want to see Joker have a massive role in a Batman movie again. And the typical answer is because they want to see other rogues gallery characters highlighted. I get it. I really do get both sides. So I do want to say just because we've had that tease from Barry Kieran recently about appearing in the Batman part two. And now that we've had the confirmation that Arkham is a DCU series. But again, that still doesn't mean he has to be main role material. Like who knows what part three could be. It might be Joker, Riddler, Penguin. It could, I'm not saying like a full on Arkham breakout or anything like that, but it could be a whole Batman Crucible storyline where he's not just against red list not just joker but this person this person this person that would be crazy but a very long story long does this mean a larger role in the movies than we thought i think yes because even at the very least 
I think if they were going to facilitate an Arkham breakout addressing the tease of the comeback story from the end of the first movie, and that's no longer happening, they could now do that Arkham breakout storyline towards the end of the Batman part two. Because it doesn't mean that Joker's going to face up against Batman there and then because the movie's kind of ending soon. But imagine a scene similar to that of the ending scene of part one, maybe we hear like alarms go off in Arkham towards the end of the movie. And you know how Selina said to Batman, oh, you're already spoken for because the bat signal lit up again. Maybe it's a similar thing where we've got over the movies, the second movie's main plot, the bat signal lights up again and Batman's like, oh, <laughs> what now? And Jim's on the phone like, man, we've got a problem. And it's it's an actual, it's, it's more than just a little crime. This is like an Arkham breakout now some of you may say and i would totally get it isn't this just like jim gordon presenting the joker card to bruce or batman at the end of batman begins i guess in a way but it, it wouldn't be identical because it would be a storyline that would have been cooked up a lot longer than obviously the joker was in the dark knight trilogy because there was just that joker card obviously at the end of Batman Begins, and then you had Joker in The Dark Knight. Now, with the Batverse, you would have had the scene in the first movie with Riddler. You would have, I guess, you know, had that deleted scene, so the character would have already been there a little bit, if you think about it. You would have had whatever mini tease in the second movie, akin to the end scene of the first movie, but then you have another end scene with what I'm just saying right now, and where an alarm goes off, there's an Arkham breakout, and then that facilitates a Joker story, possibly with other rogues gallery in collaboration with him for the third and final movie and that Arkham Breakout could have very well been a concept borrowed from what they were originally going to do in that Arkham series which is now a whole different concept well maybe even similar I guess because it's Arkham but in the DCU. Up next Brutal Vengeance points out as much as I wanted the Arkham series to be set in the Batverse I still think the series will be great. If they still keep the haunted house feel to the series then we have nothing to worry about. Still looking forward to seeing the DCU's Batman's rogues gallery. So yeah I mean I do feel the same way. I am really like melancholy about it like some people I have seen in the comments. It's weird I truly do see the silver lining like Brutal Vengeance is here. You know how can you really do Arkham without getting into this creepy haunted house aspect. Since Matt Reeves pitched it, as James Gunn said, it was one of the first pitches they brought uh, when him and Peter Safran came on board. And we know they had that meeting in January and quite literally post meeting James Gunn as I went over in my timeline breakdown video said that Matt pitched us some amazing stuff. So, you know, what I'm trying to say is, and I agree with Brutal here, is that even though we have Matt Reeves handling his own Batman crime saga in his Batverse, he will still have a fantastic stamp and he has a fantastic outlook on Batman that I would want his somewhat touch on the DCU Batman as well, his flavor. And it will still be very fantastical, don't get me wrong, but you know, he's a consultant. He's also working and producing on Batman Cape Crusader. So again, the Arkham series being in the DCU wouldn't be Matt Reeves' first non-Batverse series. That's something I think a lot of people are forgetting in how he can offer his expertise. He can have his sixth and Idaho production company work on other projects outside of his Batverse. And after all, don't forget that him and his production company have got a deal with Warner Brothers. They like him. Like he's a fantastic asset for them to have. And since he's so rooted with his own Batverse and now he's kind of blossoming out like, and he's got his own production company and as Dylan Clark, the producer, there's so many opportunities, I think, now that they've had that meeting in January and we just didn't know any of the details about until recently, that Gunn, who is also now starting his new DCU with Lone and behold, a new DCU Batman. I think he kind of wants Matt Reeves to help handle that as well. Now, I'm not saying Matt Reeves is having full creative control. Obviously not. That is still James Gunn. And then you've got Andy Muschietti directing the Brave and the Bold movie. But you will have people... I mean, you know, that's what producers do. You can have certain degrees of control and influence and ideas. Just helping map it all out. A part of this architectural team, really. I mean, yeah, that's the way I'd look at it. Back when we heard that Gunn was talking about this grand DCU architectural team. I think that is what Matt Reeves is going to be a part of 
except for Batman. I don't have anything to worry about. I do agree, as Brutal says here, when it comes to a DCU Arkham series, because it's still a plus. I mean, imagine if we never, ever, ever once even heard about the Batverse Arkham series. And then now recently, we're only just hearing the announcement of any Arkham series for the first time, and it's for the DCU Batman. I think we'd all be like, oh, cool. Is this coming out before the DCU Brave and the Bold? Oh, that could make sense since this Batman is like seven to 12 years into his career. He's already probably fleshed out a few rogues gallery characters man they could really get into the haunted house that is arkham and somewhat you know introduce these slight teases and stepping stones to the world of what the dcu's bat has already somewhat fleshed out right and and i think we'd all be like great but at the same time it's like damn i would have loved to have seen how mother freaking dark that would have been in Robert Pattinson's Batman world. Like, even, like, scenes that just play in my head right now, uh, just with how gritty that it looked in the first movie. Do you remember when Jim and uh, Batman went to Wayne Manor? That first scene of when they bust open the doors and they have, like, their flashlights out, that is just so dark and noir, and I can just so imagine what that would be like in the Arkham show. Now, I'm not saying, I mean, that's kind of like saying, wait, you're saying Arkham has no lights and it's just full of, you know, squatters and drop heads. Not really, but one thing we do know is that it didn't have great funding. Uh, it wasn't very humane. Even in the movie, you could tell that it wasn't exactly like up to date with specs, if you know what I mean. Like, they, again, it's very run down. Seeing possibly characters introduced there, like we've speculated about before, Dr. Jonathan Crane, Hugo Strange. Now, I don't want to get too off the rail there because I've always said, given that this is an early Batman who's only one year, six months in, we know that he put away Joker during Batman year one. Fair enough. We, we've seen it. We know now that he's put away the Riddler, but how many more did he really have an opportunity to put away? Like maybe Victor Zaz? I don't know, but nothing too crazy. So how crazy could they have gone with Arkham inmates? But still, that doesn't mean that you wouldn't have had a worker or two there. Again, Dr. Jonathan Crane is the best example I could give for that. And then, yeah, obviously exploring a little bit more of Barry Keown's Joker. But as I said in my timeline breakdown video of, you know, how we got to the point of where it is in the DCU now, it is what it is. And I'm on the loss of the potential, but I'm also low-key excited for the potential of uh the arkham dcu so victor qx3 vx here says the only real problem i've got with the whole thing is that could mean reeves the batman won't focus on arkham asylum and it'd be a shame to lose that plot involving bruce's mother being at arkham they could have connected things in a very interesting way if the show was being kept on in the batman universe um i don't know if they were ever gonna necessarily go back into bruce's mother being at arkham like in the arkham show if it was yeah yeah, in the Batverse. I mean, that is, I mean, I'm not going to rule that out. They could have, I guess, maybe got into Martha's time there because, as we know, she was literally in Arkham. But I don't think it was going to necessarily be a flashback show. I, I've, I've never ruled out some somewhat history being told of Arkham because in previous videos I have uh, speculated about, hey, they could get into Amadeus Arkham, the Riddler comic acknowledged him, I believe it was. Yeah, they definitely did. They were like, this could be Amadeus Arkham's like original office in this wing. But I don't think we would have gone crazy and seen full on scenes of Martha's time in Arkham. But as you're saying here, that could mean Reeves is the Batman won't focus on Arkham Asylum and that would be a shame. Not necessarily because as we've said, if they do want to expedite anything or let's just say involve Barry Keown's Joker, more in these movies at some point through maybe taking the Arkham breakout story from what would have been used in the Arkham show in the Batverse, then you can guess that we're going to see Arkham again in one of the Batman movies. So Swinglish here says, so what I'm getting is it started out as two Batverse show concepts, GCPD and Arkham. Then those ideas merged into one show, just Arkham. And then that became a DCU thing in time for the pitch meeting with the new studio. Makes sense. Yeah, basically. I mean, as you said here, so it does uh, two Batverse show concepts. I mean, you had GCPD and Arkham. And then, yeah, technically the Penguin as well. That did merge more into one as Matt Reeves is seen on video in an interview saying, well, that's now more evolved into an Arkham show. But then there were trades stressing that the Arkham show, despite Matt Reeves having said that, and that could have been true, but then maybe the trades did actually learn that 
the Arkham show did become separate and that GCPD, the spin-off for that, was still alive. So depends if you want to believe that, but apparently, yes, the GCPD show did evolve more into the Arkham show, but then apparently they then found a route again for them to both be separate and the GCPD show was still alive and the Arkham show was still alive. But yes, somewhere throughout that conceptual stage, the GCPD show may have died again. <laughs> um, and ultimately the Arkham show, I guess they didn't figure anything out enough with it up until this pitch meeting that Matt Reeves had with James Gunn, because in January they met, there's comments from Matt Reeves, and then Gunn post interview said that Matt Reeves pitched us some amazing things. So yeah, I, I guess Matt Reeves and Gunn also, and this is one thing I wanna kind of get clear out there, and I might address it in like a future update if it gets brought up again by either Reeves or James Gunn. But in that very meeting, I think they wanted to take advantage of not only how Matt Reeves is handling his own universe, but how he's got, you know, more things available, and that's his own production company, and he can produce other things at the same time within the DCU. So they were also probably looking at business ventures of what they could do there as well. One of them being the DCU Arkham show, and producing other future DCU projects. Up next from Matches Malone 8035 saying, Hey Boba, great video. With this recent news, do you think the rumblings we heard about Reeves developing movies for villains like Scarecrow, Clayface, and Professor Pig will actually be for the DCU and not the Batman? I know you mentioned Scarecrow could be introduced in the Penguin show, but wanted to get your thoughts. So this is something I have been hearing as well in that there's speculation that, hey, what if the reports we've been hearing for a long time, going back to DCEU Reddit leaks from nine months ago now, to even a year ago, the Hollywood Reporter talking about how Matt Rees was meeting with writers and directors to be involved in, you know, uh, Batverse spin-off movies for uh, Scarecrow. They said ranging from Scarecrow, Clayface to Professor Pig. But now people are thinking, hey, what if those movies were really DCU movie pitches as as per pointed out here now the thing that i don't know about that is for example the hollywood reporter article came out a year ago so in october now that was before well james gunn got hired as co-head of dc studios october 25th you know, over the next few months up until January, that's when he cooked up the DCU 8-10 to year plan and all of the projects. So I don't see how what was rumored to be a Scarecrow spinoff movie, a Clayface one and the Professor Pig one could have ever have been at the foundation stage a DCU project. Do you know what I mean? Now, th that may sound like a similar story to guess what? The Arkham show, because it's true. The Arkham show had Batverse foundations. I don't think anyone can deny that. But the thing is, in early concept stages, especially when the ball hasn't even started properly rolling, yeah, that can actually turn out to be, you know what, we don't want to pitch it for that anymore. We want to pitch it for the DCU. So it could be a thing that the Hollywood Reporter heard that Matt Reeves was looking into Batverse um, things like the spin-off movies that I mentioned or what you're seeing on screen right now, of which they, re they were reporting, were in the very early stages of gestation. But throughout the course of time, especially the key thing that I keep bringing up is that meeting with James Gunn, um, they could have evolved into pitches for the DCU. I mean, think about it. As the months unfolded, we started to hear more and more about Mike Flanagan's Clayface movie. And he, I mean, he kind of denied an aspect of it, but he said, if there was something to tell you, I would tell you kind of thing. So it doesn't mean that talks weren't taking place. So I believe talks could have very well been taking place about these projects. And yeah, maybe pitches for the DCU. Now the nine months ago reports surrounding the DCEU Reddit leaks stuff surrounded, once again, Professor Pig, I believe, Clayface, and there was a Poison Ivy uh, rumored spin-off movie based on Rappuccini's daughter. Or it may not have been Professor Pig on the Reddit one from nine months ago. It may have been Scarecrow. But the, the bottom line is, that wasn't really new to me because it was really following suit from what you're seeing on screen right now, the Hollywood Reporter article from way back in 2022 when they were basically saying the same thing. So the idea of these spin-off movies, no matter how many people are popping up and claiming, oh, this spin-off movie's in the works, isn't new. 
And, you know, I say that because we do have Daniel RPK recently saying, uh, very recently, to my knowledge, once again, reaffirming that there's a Scarecrow movie and a Professor Pig spinoff movie or something like that. But the, the fact remains, uh, at least to his rumor rumblings, that he doesn't know if it's like for the DCU or the Batverse, from what I'm understanding. So long story long, once again here, as we do on the channel, will it actually be for the DCU and not the Batman? It's hard to say, especially when, you know, we, we've seen what went down with the Arkham show, right? Clearly had Batverse foundations, but, you know, that doesn't mean early concepts can't change, pitches happen, and then uh, it was pitched for the DCU. So I do think with how much rumblings there's been about this Professor Pig spinoff, the, you know, ranging from that to uh, Scarecrow to, of course, one of the more prominent ones that's popped up over the past uh, year and year and a half to two years is Clayface. But the one thing I will still repeat for what I've said before, even when we were just talking with about these movies strictly in relation to the Batverse, is that I just I I, I can't imagine these all these movies being greenlit. Do you guys remember me saying like, okay, so we have the Batman Part One, okay, you have the Penguin series, it, it, that makes sense. It's not too uh, saturated, but. The mainline movies, there's three movies, part one, part two, part three. But then imagine like spin-off Professor Pig movie. There's a spin-off theatrical movie for Clayface. There's a spin-off theatrical movie for Poison Ivy or whatever. And we know they would be theatrical because David Zaslav has stated they are not doing streaming service exclusive movies anymore. They'll, they'll do things like Penguin, so a show. Um, and again, this has been reported by the major trades, the Hollywood Reporter and Scoopers saying they're still spin-off movies, not like The Penguin, for example, a show. So it, I, I just, there's something in me that just doesn't believe that they're gonna green light all of these spin-off theatrical movies. So you've got to go to the cinema, buy a ticket, see this on the big screen alongside the Batman Part 2, or even if you don't want to believe it's a, a Batverse project, let's now say, okay, the DCU. Uh, you've got all of these DCU projects, 10 announced by the time of making this video, uh, from that of Superman Legacy, Creature Commandos, obviously DCU's The Brave and the Bold. Technically, we've got 11 now, if you want to think about it, with the Arkham project. I don't really believe there's going to be a Clayface spin-off movie project in the DCU. In addition to a Professor Pig one, in addition to a Scarecrow one, it, it almost seems like the DCU slate will start to get oversaturated with, um, you know, Batman-related characters. And, you know, I get how some people may make an argument for how, uh, well, to be fair, Boba, the back half of the slate for the DCU hasn't been announced for Chapter 1, at least. And we know Gunn said that currently the 10 projects right now is less than half than what is to be announced for Chapter 1, which entails that there's at least another 10 plus to just complete Chapter 1. But... Final word on this, I just can't imagine that in addition to the Arkham show, you're going to have all of these separate spin-off movies. So I really don't know what to make of it, you know? I don't know if a portion of them were or are still ideas for Batverse canon-related spin-off movies, which I still find weird to imagine going to the theater to buy a ticket for a Poison Ivy movie, a Professor Pig movie, a, a Scarecrow movie, alongside the Batman Part 2. It just doesn't feel realistic to me. But yet, it also doesn't feel realistic for the DCU. Now, what I have seen, and what I'm going to explore more in my um, DC discussion series video, and I don't know if that's uploaded already by the time you're seeing this, is an idea that maybe all of this information is being misconstrued, by even the major trade, The Hollywood Reporter, um, maybe even scoopers out there, in that in the Arkham show that we now know as the DCU, one thing, and this kind of marries along with my idea of what I presented very early on with the Arkham show, at least at the time it was in the Batverse with my idea, but this can still easily be translated onto the DCU version, in that it is anthology-based, in where you have an episode by episode, so let's just say eight episodes, in where each episode of the Arkham show in the DCU is a backstory, or not necessarily a backstory, but in some way, shape, or form, in some capacity, exploring a separate rogues gallery character, or some relevant character in the Arkham space that relates to Batman in the DCU. So, Professor Pig, Scarecrow, Poison Ivy, Clayface, you name it. It all matches up to the rumors. Maybe the information was getting twisted and they could just be episode titles or something like that. This is more of a The Batman, The Batverse video. 
but I will dive into that more in my DCU discussion series video where we're going to be leaning quite a bit more into the Arkham, the DCU version of the Arkham show and what my ideas could be there for the DCU Batman and everything like that. So up next, and this is where I think we're getting to a few comments that I think are representative of what maybe a lot of people are thinking. So Wayne Belfast here says, it's been heavily reported that the Arkham spin-off was set in the Batman universe. If that was not the case, why did neither of them correct that? They're moving goalposts and don't want to admit it. Gunn was pulled in to tidy everything up, and so much of what he's been doing is just leading to more confusion. So, I, I disagree just based on what I said in my timeline video. And as to why you're saying... And, and I think it's a reasonable question. If this was the case, because it is confusing inherently when you find out about what happened with the Arkham show, why did neither of them correct that? So my answer for that is, to be fair to them, once again, we haven't heard anything, anything about the Arkham Asylum Batverse Foundation, like Batverse related version of it, spin-off show in forever. If you want to be, like, real about it, since technically, technically, October of 2022, but more formally from Matt Reeves himself, when he was doing press interviews for the Batman movie in March of 2022. So, in March of 2022, it was, it was, like, at the conceptual stage. Like, that baby had just been planted, barely, and they were like, oh, God, what's this going to be? Like, literally. He even admitted that, oh, okay, so the, the GCPD show is uh, now morphed more into, like, evolved more into an Arkham show. That is never guaranteed, and especially as I've kind of already rambled about in this video, eventually can be pitched as something else entirely, right? I mean, the GCPD show was pitched, but then it, it lo and behold, pitched into the Arkham show. And then, you know, as I kind of said earlier, and then apparently they did become separate again, but who really knows what the truth is there? Somebody needs to ask Matt Reeves one day. So, yes, even though it eventually got pitched as a DCU series in that January meeting, yes, it was heavily reported at the time of March 2022 that Matt Reeves said what he said, had an interview with Variety, says there's more stories with regards to the Joker in the Arkham space that we're looking at in relation to coming off of our movie, The Batman, that's what he meant. So yes, confirmed Batverse Foundations. But the only other update was October when they got a writer and a showrunner for the show which that doesn't offer any other update. It didn't offer any update with regards to it being Batverse or not. That was just assumed. That's very important to remember. So what I'm saying is the first update since the very, very foundation comments from Matt Reeves of March 2022, which only came out because he was asked about it in an interview, by the way, in when the Batman was first coming out, was months and months and months later in October, where the major trades found out about a writer and showrunner However, they assumed that obviously, as per previous reports, it was about the, the Batverse Arkham show. But what I'm trying to say is, behind the scenes, as things evolved into January, the reason why neither of them corrected it is because it's kind of like what I said before with certain shows and things like that. No news doesn't mean there isn't any news. It just means that they're not ready to talk about it yet. Does, does that make sense? That's always been my attitude with things like this. Sometimes fans, and I'm not saying you specifically here, but with relation to any project, they're like, oh my God, this must be going bad. We haven't heard anything about it in X amount of time. Whether it's a game being developed, so oh my God. But they just might not be ready to present whatever they want to say. And Matt Reeves is like the complete opposite. Absolutely absolute opposite of James Gunn with regards to talking publicly about things. So <laughs> the only times he said something about it is literally March of 2022. And again, the only other thing is October from the trades reporting the showrunner and writer. So he isn't the kind of guy to come out and correct it. Plus, during that time, um, they were probably still trying to figure out it being a Batverse show. But then by the time January came, um, they had that meeting. It then became a pitch for the DCU. Now, you may say, why in January when Gods and Monsters was announced uh, with those first 10 projects in Chapter 1, did they not correct it then? Well, again, Matt Reeves is pretty damn uh, private. He, ba he barely says literally anything at all. Unless it's like Batman Day or something like that. Or there's like a news about somebody who won something. He'll be like retweeting it or something like with regards to who he's worked with. Now, as for James Gunn, the only answer I could give there is he has acknowledged before that there's more projects to be announced that obviously he knows about. I mean, for crying out loud, this man has um, mapped out 
pretty much solidified, well, not solidified, but for the most part, you could say like 85% confident what the projects and movies and shows and animated shows and video games, God knows what else, are going to be for the 8 to 10 year plan of the DCU. But what did he do? He only announced 10 of them. So after only days before January 31st, when the Gods and Monsters YouTube video announcement uploaded, he had that meeting with Matt Reeves. And yes, they they established that it was going to be uh, an Arkham an Arkham uh, DCU show, and he admitted recently that it was one of the first pitches that him and Saffron bought when they came into DC Studios. The reason why he probably didn't correct it is because he didn't want to announce it in his first ten projects announcement. He announced Creature Commandos, you know, Waller, Superman Legacy, Lanterns, The Authority, etc, etc. Eventually, he announced the DCU Batman project. But maybe Arkham isn't coming out until after the DCU Batman project. Maybe it's coming before, but long story short, it might not have just been a part of the 10 projects that Gunn felt like announcing. Like, my God, he's probably got so many damn cool projects and titles, movie shows, you name it, that he wants to reveal to us. But he just didn't want to announce that in the first 10 project announcements in that chapter one video. So why did neither of them correct it? it? It's If you look at it with everything I've just said in hindsight, it would be kind of random for him to just be like, hey, uh, press people, write this article for me. Um, just want to let you know that Arkham show that Matt Reeves barely teased in March in those video interviews. And the only thing you found out about it since then is literally a writer being announced. I just want to let you guys know that it's now a DCU series. I get, I get how, yes, you can argue he could have done that. It's just not, it's not the way of doing things really. Do, do, do you know what I mean? But the opportunity presented itself when he was replying to stuff on threads. Uh, people were asking about the Batverse, they were asking about Matt Reeves and his other projects, and that's the way he kind of slipped it out there. So I, I get it's kind of easy to be like, oh, what if there's something else going on here? But trust me, I like to do my due diligence um, and have kind of go in with good faith. And I know my Arkham timeline video is quite a long one, but when you take everything into account, uh, I don't think they necessarily are maliciously moving goalposts and like dismantling the Batverse. And that leads me on to the next kind of comment, uh, you know, from a few people here. So Jake is saying here, I think it's possible that Gunn and Reeves are still in talks about merging the universes. And then we have another comment here saying, my guess is Matt Reeves' Batman universe will be in the DCU. We will see Rob's Batman journey first in the initial years in Matt's movies. And then we will see him training his son, Damian Wayne. I know James has denied this, but it looks that way when you connect the dots. We got another one here from Thomas saying, Hear me out, Boba. It's set in both universes because they're the same universe. The Batman trilogy is the prequel to Brave and the Bold, showing young Batman Pattinson, and then makeup effects Brave and the Bold is the future Pattinson. I think that'd be sick. The final words there, I think, somewhat represents where these comments are coming from. So, all I'm trying to say there, and I really don't mean this in any disrespectful way, but I've said to you guys before my analogy of fan goggles. This has always been a theory that has been knocking at my door since since forever since forever like despite how many times gun reeves whoever says it in themselves like people who are literally handling the projects or in charge of the projects say no nope, it's separate people still find a way and i get it because like with the comments i just read out from you guys it's giving you like, oh, you know, but, oh, I don't know about this. You know, we heard the Arkham show was meant to be a Batverse project, but now it's been pitched for the DC. But again, if you kind of pay attention to my timeline and everything like that, it, it does make sense. But it's kind of easy to be like, especially for those who want Robert Pattinson's Batman to be the DCU Batman. It's such a fuel for fire for that conversation to start again. It is like, you know, gasoline being poured all over it to ignite that oh well you know i think it's so obvious if you if you really think about it boy but come on man it is so obvious what they're doing behind the scenes if you i know they may not be saying it right now but in a couple of years like they're, they're gonna keep denying it but in a couple of years after superman legacy is out that's when it will be announced it's just look i don't know how many times to tell you I guess we're just going to have to wait and see because I can keep telling you guys again and again and again and again and again and again and again that Matt Reeves, even as of January, when he was talking about that meeting, he says explicitly 
James Gunn and Peter Safran are letting us do our own thing over here. James Gunn recently, when even talking about the Arkham show being in the DCU, has said in response to a fan asking, why isn't Robert Pattinson, Matt Reeves' Batman allowed, allowed, being the keyword to be in the DCU. I want to stress to everyone saying this to me right now, recently, like as in a few days ago, it, it's not an allowed thing, it's Matt's choice, and we respect that. And now people, by the way, out of that comment are saying that because James Gunn said that, um, that means James Gunn pitched it to Matt Reeves, but Matt Reeves said no. So clearly James Gunn wanted Matt Reeves' Batman, Robert Panson to be the Batman of the DCU. No, that doesn't mean that. Where did he say that? No. All James Gunn is upholding there is what Matt Reeves has been saying since 2017. That it's not in his interest, it's standalone, he says it's Warner Brothers' prerogative if they don't want him to direct the film and they want to do what they want to do with the characters, but he's going to do it his way and he doesn't want it to be connected to other characters. But they still let him do it. He's gone through this with quotes like that, that I'm paraphrasing, ever since 2017. It's been maintained and maintained and maintained. Variety, even when the DCU was brand new in its very early days of being announced, try to say... A big trade here that Matt Reeves and James Gunn were putting um, Panson's Batman into the DC world. They were exploring the possibility of it, was the quote. James Gunn literally quote tweeted that on Twitter and shut it down. Says, I like the person who wrote this article, so no disrespect to them, basically. But this is absolutely wrong. No, it is separate. Time and time and time again, the reason why I'm being passionate about this is because I feel like I need to deliver this energy into the camera lens for those who just, just still don't see it. <laughs> Time and time again, it's shut down. All James Gunn meant by like literally the most recent comment is like they respect that because they knew damn well coming in as co-heads of DC Studios what Matt's stance was on that. Um, so it's not got anything to do with this if it's an allowed thing or not. It's because it's Matt's choice and, and we still respect that. So we're, we're obviously, you know, only going into looking at our DCU Batman as a new DCU Batman. No matter what, I think those who kind of have always had this theory about Pattinson's Batman being merged into the DCU um, or whether it's that or if they also want Pattinson's Batman to be in the DCU and also whether it's the old theory of you know Pattinson's Batman being the foundation of the DCU and now as I just read out like this is a prequel and you know, oh god guys like and and again like with with my kind of <sighs> seeming exhaustion over this I'm not trying to take the piss out of those in this video who've asked this question Th this is just me being like no like I, I I just just know I don't know m what more to tell you guys I really I don't know what more to tell you there's more quotes as of making this video 48 hours ago yes we love Matt as a director and producer so he'll be producing stories both within his <laughs> I know I sound so condescending there. His, the Batman universe, and within the DCU. Notice the distinction. You know, Gunn is acknowledging they're separate universes. I mean, he, he doesn't need to do that again because he's he's actually spelt that out before multiple times. Um, and people are like also saying to me in comments, um, and I'm paraphrasing their comment here, for Matt Reeves to be so opposed against working on a, a larger universe, isn't it interesting basically that he's now doing that? It's, it, it's, that's again, taking out of context what he said before. Matt Reeves before has stated that he is basically so opposed to having his Batman, his Pattinson Batman, his Batverse Batman connected to larger universe characters. Period, right? It's not that he's so opposed to being a producer with his sixth and Idaho production company on other DC projects that are DCU. Do you know what I mean? It's like he's got a whole lot of sixth and Idaho production company, and in that meeting with James Gunn, yes, he's still keeping his Batverse separate, but there's no conspiracy theory to the aspect that he's now doing and producing with his production company, of which has a first look deal and an overall deal with Warner Brothers within the DCU. It, it doesn't mean he's directing and writing for every single DCU project or several DCU projects. It just means that he's like, oh yeah, man, you know, I, I'll, I'll do a thing or two, maybe consult here, maybe pr help produce that one over there. You know, this what that, that's what that means. He never said that he was opposed to being a producer. It's just, it, it just means having your hand in different bowls of food, if you know what I mean. You're cooking up your main recipe over here, like he is with uh, the Batverse, but he's also going to dip his fingers because 
I guess he likes DC. He likes Batman. And my my opinion is that he's going to be more of a consultant and producer on Batman-related projects in the DCU. But he also gets his whole ass crime saga separate over here. And then don't even get me started on the whole aspect of, you know, if you still believe this, it's just like, you really think that Robert Pattinson, this is a thing of why... Um, when we've talked about, you know, why isn't it more than three movies? And, you know, I've gone into that whole bunch before. But I've talked about, you know, there's the talent. Do you do you think that? And some people may say, yeah, with enough money. But do you think that Robert Pattinson would want to stick around for like this amount of time of his life to one role? Now, I'm not saying that he wouldn't. I don't know the guy. But he doesn't seem like the kind of guy who's going to go from years and years and years doing Batman or the, the Batman projects to then signing on for an eight to ten year plan for years and years and years of his life to be consumed by dcu batman like older batman stuff with damian wayne like i do get like this is one thing i need i need you guys to understand and i bring back the fan goggles analogy i get what you're saying but just because it lines up with how you're like well, technically, Robert Pattinson could be, his Batman could be a prequel. And in a way, that could make sense because the DC Batman is picking up at a time in where Batman's so far in his career to the extent of having Damian Wayne coming in. Robert Pattinson's Batman could be... But just because there's a cohesion to your theory, that doesn't mean it will be reflected in reality. And everything that we have been presented in reality, like, for the umpteenth time, is that... The Batverse is separate. I don't know how many more times something needs to be said for people to believe it. But I mean, I guess the point is for some people that despite them, they're saying despite them saying this, they still think it's going to be merged. And at the end of the day, what, what can I, what can I say to that other than, all right, I guess I'll see you in four to five years and we'll have a conversation about it then. But ladies and gentlemen, that is everything I'm going to get into today. As usual, seriously, I have so many more screenshots that I convinced myself I was going to get to. I even wanted to get to other questions outside of, you know, the, the Arkham stuff, the Rogue spin-off stuff, and, you know, the, just everything that we covered in today's video. Just maybe more into, like, hey, the plot for part two and everything like that. But I think given, you know, the, the shocking, somewhat shocking news recently and, you know, the theory surrounding that, the Rogue stuff and the rumors about spin-off movies there, there was just so much for me to already get into but i hope you still enjoyed it anyway and uh, for those of you who got to this part um just thank you i really really do appreciate your support i love talking about this so 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 much it's so awesome to see how much you guys support these videos some some of you watch it but some of you also listen to it like a podcast in the car or with the, you know the gym or whatever you're doing which is just crazy to imagine and who knows i might actually upload this in a podcast format a lot of you have requested that and uh, yeah, I might make it available in audio only versions as well on other platforms, maybe. So I will be looking into that in the new year. Plus, I did say I wanted to actually start a podcast in general. So keep an eye out for that on the horizon. It's not going to be strictly Batverse, but I think something a bit of everyone will be interested in. Um, but yeah, guys, um, depending on when you're watching this, as I said at the beginning, I hope you're having a great holidays. Uh, here's to 2024 on the channel. Thank you for riding with me forever. You know, whether you subscribed yesterday to, you know, last year to some of you three, four years ago or whatever it was. I hope you enjoy the journey in 2024 because things just got to get crazy. And I'm not even trying to sound hyperbolic there. It may seem dead in terms of some fronts of certain content, but the production, the news surrounding the Batman part two, going into Superman Legacy and other DC projects, there's going to be a lot to cover that way and then gearing towards the end of the year the penguin joker 2 everything like that so thank you so much guys once again i really appreciate you watching hit the like button if you're not subscribed and you're still watching double check if you subscribe by the way because a lot of you think you are but you might not be it just could be that i'm popping up on your home page and maybe today is the day i get your subscription but until next time bat family i'll see you in the next video goodbye